I want to talk about the fun stuff. We had to talk about the sad bit there. How <laughs> was becoming pro and getting that call about that contract and hearing, like, I want to, in my mind, I look at it as the bright light of you've mm. now seen that big sign that says the stuff you worked for and you bet on yourself and it's paid off. But mm. how was it for you? How was it for the rest of the girls? How was it? Yeah, I think it was it was quite unique the way it happened. Um, obviously, Johan had just come in. He'd only been involved with us for a couple of months um, in the autumn before, so he didn't really have like much to go off either. Um, but yeah, I think there was only 12 of us that originally selected on full-time contracts, and then I think we had 12 part-time at the time. Um, so it was, quite, it was quite unique, and obviously we still had girls who weren't contracted, so we still had to like tailor training so that we were training in the evenings in Six Nations just so we could have time as a squad. Um, but like we were, we were lucky enough, like as a twelve and as a, as a as a twenty four, that we could come in during the day and get skills done, our gym and our our, our S and C side of things done. Um, so that was really beneficial, and to be one of the first twelve to get professionally contracted was was amazing, and just really lucky that I could have been a, like could be a part of that really, and hopefully now that's just the standard, and we keep pushing and. Obviously, we've got got more contracts given to us in the summer uh, in the lead up to the World Cup as well, which was excellent. And hopefully, we can just continue to build on on the foundations that that have been put in place now. Have you noticed them? Um, have you noticed the change in it since then? Obviously, I imagine first of all, like as you as a person, we'll talk about the the squad as a collective as a result of this. Mm -hmm. But you as a person was the first thing you thought you like. What do I do with all this free time? Or like, how did how yeah. did your life change as a result of becoming a pro? Definitely, like, more free time in the sense that, like, obviously I don't have to be at Bristol now till, like, half past two. So it's like I've got <laughs> my morning yeah. um, so I can just chill and, and, and kind of do what I need to do to get myself ready to go. But, yeah, there's obviously still a lot of people who are who are working and having to find the balance then of, of that is, is quite difficult. So, like, that was probably the biggest change for me is that, like, I've got the time to just switch off a little bit and I think I seen in Six Nations it was quite like hard to kind of see that because we had to do both we okay. had to like be professional in the morning and then train in the evening with everyone else um but obviously once everyone had had their contracts come June and we started pre-season like we were in at I think eight o'clock yeah, so we got to the veil like eight o'clock and then we were done by three. And um, that's when I seen the benefit there. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do? What am I going to do tonight? Like, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's a good boredom to have, like, because you can just switch off, like, recover properly, eat good food, um, watch back training or whatever you need to do, ready to go again the next day. So I think it wasn't probably until pre season that I actually seen the benefit of being professional. Yeah, and then did you notice as a squad? Did you notice like just the level of rugby increasing like mm. almost instantly? Because like you said, you can now recover mm. better. You're not running around all the time. Mm. There's not you. You don't need to use up twenty four hours in the day in a sense of every minute is dedicated to something. Now that you have that flexible time, how was it? How did the atmosphere change like as the squad when that happened? Yeah, I think everyone definitely enjoyed coming to train in a lot more. Um, there's more smiles on faces. Um, but I think it's just then, like, everyone's, like, nuts and bolts probably got a little bit better. Like, the one percenters of our games, like, for me, probably my box kickings got a lot better because now I can, like, dedicate a slot to mm. kicking and box kicking. Um and it's yeah, it's like probably the same then for our girls, like like our hookers and stuff, like our percentages in the line now went up because they actually had time to just throw and mm -hmm. get timings with the jumpers and stuff. So all like the small stuff of like bits of our game that probably would let us down under fatigue got better just because we were able to put so much more time into them. Um and I think in, in June, our fitness, I think as a squad, we all got, like, leading into the World Cup, we all got, like, fitter, faster and stronger. 
because we were we were on quite like a I don't want to say strict because it, it wasn't strict but like we were we all knew exactly what we needed to do we had a program put in place um and I think we all seen the benefits of it come come the World Cup um mm-hmm. so that that like it's it's nice to see changes then when you've spent your like a good six or seven years doing it and then I've probably seen more changes in in seven weeks than I probably did in seven years <laughs> um, just purely because and I think for me as well like I said to some of the girls like for me it was a mind, mindset shift as well I was like well it's my job now like I have to be good at it yeah like obviously I wanted to be good at it before but there was always like excuses be like what's well, not my job like I'm not professional like I can get away with not doing that whereas now I'm like no I have to, I have to be good at it like there's no excuses anymore um, so that was probably a mindset mindset shift that I had definitely the last like 13 months yeah wow um I love hearing stuff like that especially when you talk about the mindset that the the human psyche of sport becoming profession always interests me because mm-hmm. like you say there's now there is like a caveat to not being in the top percent because like oh this could yeah. this lifestyle I've worked so hard for can now get taken away from me in a sense yeah it's, that, like there's not an endless amount of contracts as much as everybody wishes there was no and like Johan's very very much like it is what it it is what it is like it's very black and white like if you're not performing like yeah. you could you could not have, like when contracts come around to be renewed like you could not have one because you haven't done xyz and you're not performing so and now that it, it's a career in Wales for people there's going to be more like young girls, like, you know, chomping at the bit to, to get a contract. So the pressure's there from that sense as well. Like if you're not performing and he sees potential in a, a young player that's like right on your heels, like you're at risk of losing it. So yeah, that's in the back of your mind as well. Like just because you've got a contract, it's now not, now's not the time to be complacent with it. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. And I think, I think you show the real fortitude that you have to have to keep this mm. mentality alive. And I mean, like you say yourself, I could just do eight till three and be finished, but you're like, then I'm going yeah. home, I'm rehabbing, I'm watching skills back. I'm just doing these mm. one percenters. Hey, thank you for listening to this clips episode on YouTube. And then if you want to hear the whole podcast, you can find them on Apple or Spotify, as well as the full video version on this YouTube channel, alongside all the other great content we produce on a weekly basis. Thank you so much for listening and I hope to see you again on another Clips episode or in the full episode podcast. Tweet us, tag us, let us know what you thought. All the links are down in the description. It means the world that you guys come and support us. So thank you very much.